yesterday I tried, and I had four mosquitoes on each leg in the first two minutes, so I knew that that probably wasn't a good idea and packed up my bags and head home. But thankfully this morning it was much better, and I was able to get probably 100 plus shots that I'm excited to go through and pick out the best and then have some fun in Lightroom. So come along with me now, hang out. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave a comment below. And if you know anybody who might like this, maybe drop their name in a comment or send it their way. Um, I'm gonna check on the back end real quick, make sure everything looks good for the multi-streaming because we are on YouTube Live, LinkedIn Live, and my private Facebook group, Matt's Photo Courses. So if you're interested in learning more stuff like this, be sure to check out my private Facebook group. That's where you're gonna get the latest. You can also check out earthupclose.com where you can find my Discord and a lot of other resources that may be useful. So without any other delays, let's get started. Sorry for those of you who showed up before and I had to uh, fix some things. Thank you for being here and I'm excited to share. All right, I'm gonna go to the back end and check on some things. Make sure that we're looking good for the different multi-streams. It looks like all of the channels are properly active and it's looking like I have a new request for the group, which is awesome. They are now in and it's so great to have you, welcome. I'm gonna check in on LinkedIn. There should also be a live stream and then I'm gonna check on YouTube because it should be live there as well. Um, once I make sure those are ready, then we will continue. Looks like I am live on YouTube. Just gonna check, make sure the volume is working correctly. Oh, we've got a watch here. Thank you so much for joining. Um, making sure levels are good. Excellent. All right, YouTube's good. LinkedIn is good as well. Hi, LinkedIn. Got a couple folks so far. If you guys know anybody who might be interested, um, I'm just going to be editing some photos here in just a minute, making sure everything looks good. And then over here on my private Facebook group, we have a new member, um, up to 66 members today. And that's really exciting. Just started it a couple days ago. I'm going to be doing a LinkedIn group as well, so keep an eye out. And if you're interested in joining my LinkedIn group for learning some techniques like Lightroom and stuff like that, then let me know in a comment and I'll send you an invitation once that's ready next week. Um, all right, looks like Facebook's working correctly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out so I can keep my focus. And looks like everything's doing well. I'm going to just turn this off as well. Awesome, now it's just this, excellent. So you should be able to see um, my whole screen, but I'm gonna make sure that I get my dashboard in the right spot. Almost ready, everyone. I'm not used to multi-streaming. This is my first time doing multi-streaming, so it's exciting and I'm thrilled to dive in and share more of my process with everyone. Make sure my microphone's good pop filter and looks like we're all set. Excellent. So I have the chat available if anybody's interested and then I also have okay it says LinkedIn's offline. I want to make sure that's working. I want everyone to have equal opportunity to watch and learn. Let's see here. You work in LinkedIn? All right, let's see, LinkedIn. Oh, excellent, LinkedIn's working. Good, we should be good to go. I'm gonna leave this up this time and I will try and check the comments when I can, but it is time to focus in. So again, welcome everybody. Today is the first of many live Lightroom edits. So I'm gonna be just going through my camera roll for today. I took my Canon R5 and the RF 100 millimeter macro out for a spin and got some lovely macro images right up the road from where I live. So it's great to get out locally and see what you can see and um, explore what that looks and feels like. So I'm going to get into my camera roll now and I am just going to get it pulled up. It looks like looks like it did it correctly. Good. Okay, so we will switch to here and you should be able to see my pictures now. I'm going to double check. Um, yeah, that should be the right one. 
Excellent. All right, so this was today's photo walk. It was a big mix of different Florida species, different plants and animals, um, some reptiles, some insects, some birds. I really saw a lot of different neat things, and it's exciting to think about the possibilities to explore both in an artistic sense when we're reviewing these again, and then in a creative sense, like how can we use these creatively moving forward? Before we continue, I am going to grab a quick drink. I will be right back. All right. So we are here in the camera roll from the hike today and saw some really beautiful species. Um, I'm going to go through these. Right now I'm in camera offload folder that I made just for getting my stuff off my card. And um, I'm using Photo Mechanic Plus. It's a digital asset management tool. And uh, I do want my music, so I'm going to start that back up. And what I do in Photo Mechanic is it lets me go through my images in rapid succession. And these are 50 megapixels each. They're quite large. Uh, the nice part is these load almost instantaneously with Photo Mechanic. So it lets me observe every detail I need to without depending on other products that typically take a longer time to load. So um, I'll typically start in Photo Mechanic and then pick the favorite ones and the backups, and then I'll move over to Lightroom for the rest of the edit. So. Um, selection is always the first part of the edit process, and it's important to go into selection with some intention. So for me, it was really just get back out there and start having fun again this morning um, through this specific trail, through this specific viewpoint. So it was not a no rules thing. It was just get out there and start creating. So that's it, 140 for today. Not too many in my book. Um, in one trip alone, I took 25,000 images for um, a 2018 trip to Iceland. So it is definitely 140 is manageable. So we're gonna start with this picture of the alligator and I'm just gonna use my left right arrow keys and then my number one key to go through and flag my favorite images. So. Typically it's best and almost best. Um, A-list a shots and B-list shots is how I like to think of them. So I have my left hand, my middle finger is on the one key and my thumb is on the Z key for zoom and it'll zoom right to the center of that image. And um, then my right hand, I have my fingers on the left and right arrow keys. So now I can just go left, right, load each image and then hit the number one for the bottom left Did it work? Oh, bottom right. Okay. So when I flag them, it'll be bottom right. I thought it was bottom left, that's stars. Um, and then I'm just gonna go through and mark which ones I like. But before I do that, I noticed that I took this one horizontally, not vertically. So I want to go through first and correct the image's orientation. I know that sometimes it doesn't calculate the orientation when I'm taking the image, or even if it does, it's still meant to be a different way after, and I just have to be at a really weird angle to get the shot that I need. So a lot of times in macro, you'll end up laying on the ground, stuff like that. Today I got a couple ants on my leg. Uh, fire ant bites are always fun but I was able to get a pretty cool shot. So I uh, didn't know those were there, obviously, but um, yeah, they reminded me that they were fire ants. Fire ants aren't, aren't ideal. That's one of the things that mosquitoes that really makes work in Florida interesting. Um, worst case scenario, um, you get into some ticks as well, and then that really gets everything going. So I am going to go through here. I know these were sideways. We're gonna rotate with um, control, no, alt right bracket. We'll use alt right bracket and then rotate those accordingly. So I'm rotating those clockwise. And I think those might've been the only ones that needed rotated. Nope, got a few more. And alt left bracket for counterclockwise. 
And I think that's it. Now we are ready. So we'll go back to the beginning. Back to our pink flag down here in the lower right um, of this alligator that I shot here. So I've got my left hand on 1 and Z, and I've got my mouse to click and drag when I zoom. And then my right hand will do the arrow keys. So we're going to go through after I move my mouse and see what we've got. Oh wow, there's a thrip on this flower. Little insects that are biting sometimes, but it's really cool to see it on the flower. I had no clue it was there. I love it when stuff like that happens. I call them like little happy accidents, kind of like Bob Ross. Um, that's like the magic in the moment. Um, you don't always see those layers. And if you notice bottom right, I'm gonna start flagging them pink. Right now they're all gray. See, nothing is happening in the bottom right. And then if I flag that one pink, See, now in the bottom right, it's pink. So just keep an eye on that as I'm flicking through. I'm going to start um, working at a normal pace. It may seem really fast, but I'll go through after, and I'll slow down if it's too much. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to reset the room, check on the stream, make sure everything's looking OK, and make sure we don't have any specific requests, because I want to make sure that I take care of my community. I've got my YouTube live going. I've got Facebook groups and it should pipe the comments in through this multi-streaming platform, but I'm not going to depend on technology to always do what it's supposed to. Uh, before the stream started, it was, um, you know, a question of whether or not I could even get it to work. So let's have a look here. It looks like, uh, looks like LinkedIn's still working correctly. I'm going to click join and check in on things. All right. Good stuff, that's going well. We're gonna check in on Facebook now. And excellent, looks like Facebook's working correctly for the groups. And then over here on LinkedIn, we've got one watching and it doesn't appear to have any comments. All good, just checking in. And we've got some viewers on Facebook as well. So I'm gonna dive back into the edit and we will continue. Check on that. Excellent, should be good. We want that to be pink, pink, not red. So I'm gonna hit the number one and now it's pink. All right, here we go, continuing. I had this really nice vine that I was trying to catch the light on the leaf. And this first one, it was really warm. Auto white balance sometimes can lean one way or the other. Although I change it after, it's just nice to have the mindset of like seeing that accurate color on the back of the screen, even though I'm shooting raw. Um, so this was auto white balance. I like where it was headed, but I needed to get it a little more dialed in. My flash placement was different this time. And then I got my flash where I wanted it and I adjusted the temperature and I was happier with where, where that was going. So I flagged that third one pink just now. And if you'll notice, it's got a lot of lovely textures between the spikes on the edges of this leaf and the patterning of the leaf venation, and then even the new tendrils that it's growing. And on top of all this, we have the water element. So the nice part is um, I started to see some life forms crawling around like this, and it was really cool to see um, these ants into action. So I got in close to the ants. And let me zoom in so we can check critical focus. Yeah, so this was great. I was watching her do her thing. First image was in focus, but it was a little dark. I'll mark it anyway as a backup. And let's see here, a couple more images. She was crawling around some. I'm really zoomed in tight right now, 100% crop. Uh, it's just for that critical focus while I find the images that are tack sharp because I want to make sure those are the ones I work with. All right, now I can zoom back out. I really like this one. The directionality of the veins and or of the tendrils, um, it all comes together nicely. Continue forward, you can see between this frame and that frame, big focus difference. Now we've still got some motion blur going on, but I'm going to tag the second one for sure as a potential keeper. This is something I've seen a few times and over the years, I've never been able to document it. Um, this is a woodpecker and it's on the top of a palm and I think what it's doing is um, somebody said it might be picking out insects. So that was really interesting to learn. I didn't know that they use that as kind of a corn on the cob for a snack, if you will. So I'll go through those and that's a nice profile that you can see of the woodpecker's head. I'll mark that as a primary. And that's another secondary nice one. And I think that's probably it for that series. I also really like that cloud, so I grabbed a quick shot of that. All 
All right. I'm just going to check in on the back end real quick, make sure everything's looking okay. Let's see if anybody has any questions or thoughts. And then I'll continue. All right, looking good. Come back over here. And switch back to that. Excellent. Now I marked it red again because of my switching of software. So when you're switching around using shortcut keys in programs like um, Photo Mechanic, make sure that you always check to make sure a change didn't happen during switching from like Lightroom to Photo Mechanic or um, Photoshop, anything like that. So I marked that pink again, so it'd be the right color. And I'm gonna mark that second one as well. And grab this anol. And then this is some beauty berry that we saw. Um, that was a test shot, didn't turn out in focus enough. But these next ones are good. Move my mouse. I think that I wanted to show all the stages of beauty berry in one shot. And I think this picture did that well, but what I don't like is it doesn't have enough light down in this area over here on the left. It just kind of gets swallowed up by the darkness. Same with this berry right here, and that's, that's the very first stage. So I think that this as a backup is okay, but I'd really like to go for this other image right here, the first one, um, showing the whole sequence because it shows enough light over here on the left. Um, a challenge might be, you know, darkening for the background if it's too distracting, but I think that this is overall a stronger image because of what I just mentioned. So that's the primary, and that's the secondary. And then this is our next scene, some Arthonia rubricincta. It's an endemic lichen that's only found in the southeast United States on sable palmettos or sable palms, uh, palm trees, and it's very small. If you drew a comma on a piece of paper, then one of these little red splotches would be the size of that comma, probably. Um, I really like the abstract nature of it, and I always love getting in close and filling the frame with this one. So it's um, wonderful to see this close and admire the details of. It al always reminds me of a Jackson Pollock painting or something like that. So um, I'll definitely be choosing one of these. I just need to make sure I pick one that, oh, well, this is a situation where I got the focus right. I checked it in the field and didn't need extra shots because I love the composition so much. Just a casual walk today. So that was the only picture I took of this. And same for this, one good shot and ready to rock. And it looks like we've got some friends that we could have focused on though. Um, maybe I'll have to go back out there because there's some really cool ants that are crawling around all over these yellow flowers. All right, that one's been marked pink. And that's the flower seed pod. And then some more lichen. This was a yellow leaf that I worked with. You can notice we've got about 80% focus and then this other 20% falls off. I wasn't directly perpendicular with it, so that's why. Um, I still love the feeling though, so I'm gonna grab that as a primary and that's overblown. We can turn on our highlights by um, making them too hot. I think it's the B, yeah, B. And now it shows the blown out area in red. And I think you can do N for negative space. Um, yeah, one of these shows if it's crushed. I need to look it up, but I don't recall in the moment. So for now I'll turn on B and we'll see if it's too blown out, too bright by that red mark. Um, most of this is in good focus. I think that even though it's a little blown out, there's probably some really nice detail in there. Um, again, we don't see this highlight warning anywhere, and that's what that red is in the lower right. So I'll mark that as a close-up primary. This one's too dark, and that was all I got, so I'm gonna keep it anyway, see what we can do with it. This is some lovely Christmas lichen that I saw, and I didn't realize that this palmetto frond was in the foreground, so I'm going to switch up my music real quick. All right, get my volume up a bit. So this is Christmas lichen. This is Herpothallin rubricincta. Um, no, Herpothallin. <laughs> my brain sometimes. It's gonna bug me. Um, 
Cryptothesia was what it used to be, and now it's Herpethalon, but that's regardless. It's a very beautiful hot pink lichen, and I've never seen a lichen any other color. These are right in our backyard here in Florida, and I really love how vibrant they are. A lot of people have asked me in the past if they've even been photoshopped, but they aren't. This is straight out of camera. So I'm going to mark this one pink for a keeper for the first close-up, and then I only took one second close-up, and it didn't turn out in focus except for the very back, so I'm just gonna skip that one. Did some more backlit leaves. I have a lot of fun with this, and um, really enjoy looking at the different patterns and textures. These are folliculose lichens. They're lichens that grow on the surface of foliage, so these are actually citrus leaves on a wild, um, this is a wild citrus tree on a plot of land. So it was really interesting to see um, basically this kind of aerial landscape almost in macro miniature. So these are different types of lichens and mosses and molds and fungi and even insects that are living on the surface of this single leaf, like it's a, an entire world. Um, this is why I love macro. So I will go through these and see what's in best focus. This one has a lot more focus than the prior one. This is number two. So I'll mark it pink and continue. I did a rotation to try and fit more species in. And I think just as a, as a focus check to make sure everything was going through. Yeah. So I'm gonna choose that one. And I like this song. I'm going to loop it. This is, uh, you guys can't hear it, but this is the composer from um, the person who wrote all the Minecraft sound scores. So it's really peaceful. And um, I actually have ringing in my ears 100% of the time, mostly. Um, like 95% of the time. It's tinnitus, and it's something I've dealt with most of my life. So music is a big part of my life. These earbuds live in my ears, and probably more than they should, but um, after wearing headphones too long, I started to notice my hair was doing some weird stuff. So, onward. I'm going to go through the rest of these and pick out the ones that are in focus, maybe rotate a couple. We need it to go a little less. Hang tight. There we go. All right, that is out of focus, and that's a nice one with this fly on the edge of the leaf. Um, I was worried it was going to take off before I could get a shot, but it looks like it's even got a drop of water in its mouth, so I wish I would have gotten at a lower angle. Um, it took off right after that shot, so I only got one opportunity. This was the guardrail, like a permanent wood replacement for a bridge. And even though the whole thing's not in focus below this middle line, it's really nice textures and details that I think are, you know, worth exploring and observing. So lichens and liverworts and maybe even some moss here and there. Um, aerial landscape miniatures. So I'll tag this one to begin. And I guess that's the only shot of it I got today. I'm becoming more succinct in the images I take lately, and it feels focused. That's the only way I know how to say it. And um, a lot of times that means only needing to take two or three frames, but I think that it's important we get out there and just look around. So I would encourage you all, if you haven't yet, get outside this weekend and just have a look at your backyard. Get a little closer, slow down a little bit, and just kind of wait, see what comes out of the woodwork. It's like magic to watch, and it's surprising every time. And this is like my 16th, 17th year doing it. So I would encourage you, you know, get out there and find those little moments of opportunity to see what makes the world tick. All right, before I start on the next scene, I'm just going to take a minute and check in on things. I'll leave it right here for the moment and come over here to the Facebook group and other areas. All right. Looking good so far. Going to close that out. 
And we're back. Excellent. So we're going to go from this leaf and we're going to check out this awesome lichen scene that was my favorite spot the whole walk this morning. What I loved about it was it's on the side of a sable palm and it's got a little bit of everything from Florida, from mosses to lichens to fungi and even some molds and maybe bacteria. And the bark's peeled away in the upper left. I'm getting some um, some chills right now just talking about it. I have um, synesthesia. There's about 70 different types, but music and empathy, em emotion, things like that, it triggers a kind of like mystique on X-Men, how her skin shimmers. My, my skin just kind of shimmers like that sometimes, so it's pretty cool, but art does that and uh, emotion, music, and conversation, and um, this particular scene did that for me just now. It gave me goosebumps. So um, what I loved about it was the textures and shadows and colors and forms. They all just talk to each other really perfectly. And I didn't have anything to do with it. I don't groom the scenes like you saw that other scene. I just worked through that process of having some stuff in the foreground. But what I loved about this was I started mixing the light and how it hit the scene. And I noticed that when I had less light on the scene, it made it really, really mysterious and made me ask myself, how can I use shadow in my storytelling? And how can I use this idea of mystery and darkness and the unknown, something that I can't stand personally, um, as a vector for visual storytelling and our voice for these species? Um, because I used to, I'd get into Lightroom and I would just crank up the shadow slider when I was first starting out and all this over a decade ago. And now shadow is one of my favorite elements to use. Um, so this is great. And it's wonderful to see all of these details and every piece of this lichen or bark or moss or fungi. But there's something about the mystery that that darkness brings. And then I try and dial it back a little bit. So I find the sweet spot. And when I find that sweet spot, it starts looking something kind of like this. So it's about 50-50 split between bright and crisp and dark and mysterious. And I think that that middle ground is where these disciplines of art and science can mix really beautifully. It's almost like magic. Here again, it got a little too hot. I'm going to mark the one before. And then we moved on. So that was it. Um, the final scene, one of the final scenes for the day, we can check over here. Oh, final scene. We've still got some work to go through. One of the later scenes was this really cool grass. It was setting my allergies off something fierce, but it was interesting to see this ant that was going around collecting all these little pieces of seed. So... I watched her do her thing and uh, tried to get a cool shot where uh, she's cleaning her antenna. Okay. I wonder why she looked so strange out there. I kind of like that one where she's cleaning her antenna. It's just a quiet moment. Um, I like antenna pointing down, not pointing up. So I'll mark the first, not the second. And the third. And then, I think she took off. Yeah, there she goes, so dead center. And I was a little bright, a little hot on the studio strobe. So these are all in situ. I'm not taking anything from where it lies. I'm not adapting anything. I'm not freezing any of these insects or spraying anything on them or these plants. I fully respect the ecosystems I work on. And I think that's critically important for everybody, even if you're just going for a nature walk and you're not a photographer. Um, these colors really grab my eye and I haven't seen this particular, I don't know, I've seen these flowers my whole life, but I've never seen one just like this one today. So I stopped by that flower. Had some fun with this shield bug or some kind of stink bug. It's a true bug for sure, so it's in the Hemiptera family. I can tell because of the shield shape on its back like that. And Hemiptera is Latin for leathery wing, so it looks kind of leathery if you look at it up close. But this is a 
this is a juvenile, I think, so it's just a young thing. And then this is the shell of a cicada. So if you've ever seen these uh, June bug shells sitting around, this is, um, oh wow, it actually looks like it recently popped out of this molt, and um, there was some some tissue there with it from the past uh, iteration and new form. Well, that's really cool. Um, these always kind of freaked me out as a kid, but then I thought they were cool when I started running around the woods with my grandparents, picking them up off the trees. So I think I'll save the second one, and I'll save the first two. I only took two pictures of it. So With this one, I'm looking at the patterning. I'm looking to see what's in focus. I love the edge lighting on the center here. It's got this really crisp edge right here, and that's really what's drawing my eye in this case, because I knew how well that these pick up light, like that right there. Um, I'll back it off a little bit in Lightroom, but that's that's what I mean. And I really love these new um, these new spore packets that are forming. I know Sori. There we go. S O R I Sori. Um, and I think that we can get some really cool crops out of this. So I'm going to grab this one and this one. Then we'll have a look over here. We have partial focus. So then I'm going to ask about composition. Is that more different than these other ones? Okay, so this versus that. Yeah, this is pretty busy with the background, so I'm going to skip it. This is okay. Checking critical focus. I like the focus on one better than two. And here's three. We've got far left focus for three. See over here, all these are in focus, but these aren't in focus, so it's kind of a toss up. For number two, these are in focus, so we could crop up here, get something interesting. And then number one, we get a little bit more. I think it's more the rib area. So yeah, number one's gonna be our best bet for single single frame as much as we can get. Might be able to combine some of these, but probably not, just because of the nature of it. Now this is interesting. It shows just how the slight change in a placement of light between one and two, that can make a big difference. I like them both for their own reason, but I'm gonna save one of each. And these are out of focus. That one looks good. A little hot, but I think that there's still a good image over here, so I'll grab it. And this one's nice. And this is what I mean about how you can't see the whole picture at any given time in focus. So in macro photography and photography in general, you have depth of field. And depth of field means you can only see so many of these spore packets at one given time, these sorry. Um, this was set to f11, so that aperture is fairly wide, but it still isn't going to give everything in focus. So this is a great example of how we have a shallow depth of field, even if it's a higher number, um, like f11, um, wider aperture. So why do I do f11? It's kind of a sweet spot for my taste and look and focus and feeling atmosphere. Um, f11 works fairly well most of the time for my style of how I shoot my macro. All right, I tried to get a couple more images to illustrate that. And I think that one's nice as well. I'll save it. I don't have many of this species with um, this level of sharpness. So I will catalog these and they'll go in as record shots. This one's a little dark, but it might be salvageable. I'm gonna check the other ones first. And I think this one and the first one. This should be rotated though. The lighting looks off. I can't recall which direction I shot it at the moment, but that's okay. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna switch back over here. Hi there, just gonna reset the room really quick. I'm doing a live Lightroom edit, the first of many. I had a great nature walk this morning and I just wanted to share my process. So this is me um, showing up in my Facebook group, LinkedIn Live and YouTube Live. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Just realize there might be a slight lag, about a 20 to 30 second lag. So it's great to have you all here and I'm excited to share all of the parts of how my brain works through 
the creative process. So I'm just going to make sure that everything's working correctly on the back end. And as soon as I have confirmation of that in one moment, we'll continue. Let's see here. Everything's looking good. It looks like we don't have any specific questions yet, which is perfectly fine. Just want to make sure that if we do, I can get them answered. And we're going to check on this. Uh, let's see here. Good, good, good. All right. Looking great. So we're going to go back over to... There we go. Let's see here. I'm just going to check in on this. And Sorry about that. Not sure if I glitched out or not, but I am here. So just making sure that it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this. Sorry, everyone. I am going to quit apologizing so much starting now. Um, this is fun. I'm having fun. OK, so I am going to make sure this is working. Looks like it is. If you have a friend that likes photography, by the way, I would love for you to share this. Um, I'm trying to open up more about how I do what I do, and I love connecting with other people who love to create. So I am going to go here really quick and check in. Great. Looks like it's still working. <laughs> All right. And here. Awesome. Still working. Good, good, good. Excellent. <sighs> All right, let's edit some pictures. Now, we're towards the end of our film strip here. As you can see, we are approaching the end. So we got our dog vomit slime mold all tagged as ready to rock and now we're going to move on to this cool mushroom that we found even has a drop of water at the bottom i'm going to check my light and focus and composition normally later in a mid to late sequence first few images it takes finding that balance i think that this one and this one all right i really wanted that water drop in the lower right in focus for this spider web in a blade of grass. So I'm going to go through until I see that water drop in tack sharp focus. That could be one. And I can tell you why that's the one right now. This one shows us the web. Part of it's in focus, but not the part that I'm hoping for. At first, I thought this image was about the water drop. I've got chills again, because I've just realized this image just has nothing to do with the water drop, um, and it has nothing to do with the empty spider's lair, if you will. It has everything to do with this final image, because that spider's revealed in the background. Now, once again, I'm realizing, wow, what a cool missed opportunity, but I'm taking a mental note so I can go back next time and revisit that specific area. So I'm going to mark this final image. We've got the water drop in focus, the spider web upper, upper portion and lower portion in focus because of the concave shape, and um, then even the spider in the background. And what I love about this as well is we've got the jagged edge of this sawgrass. So it's got a little bit of everything. It's showing the leaf lit from behind and partially side lit because you can see the surface right here. That's a true color without backlighting right there. So it's nice because it's a, a whole story and an image, as you'd say. So I'm going to continue on, and we'll wrap up with these next ones. We've got a twisting vine that has a really nice shape to it that I'll probably just get in close. And then the final image was these water drops, six water drops on the bottom of a leaf blade. 
I thought, you know, how can I take this and kind of illuminate the water drops and show that blade of grass? And um, it's really interesting to see the difference, the contrast between those water drops and the saw blades on the grass. So this last one's in focus for the water. And we have another water focus right here on the right. And if you breathe wrong, this stuff goes out of focus. So that's half the challenge. This is a nice one. The upper spikes are in focus and we've got this nice little highlight here. Um, could be a winner. So let me check the original. It does look a little hot though. See, and there's the evidence. I hit the letter B for boy or beta and I can zoom in to see that a lot of this actually has zero detail in it. So if we were to look at the the graph for this image, it's going to be blown out at the ceiling and there won't be anything recoverable there. Um, so I'm going to turn that back off, the highlight warnings. I'll hit Z to zoom out again. And we're just going to go with, hmm, this image. I like that one a lot, but I like how this one's closer. It might be a push or pull depending, but we have our images now. So back here in the main area, I'm going to sort these by color turning off the ones that don't have a marking, and we're left with 62 good images out of 140, so I cut it by half. Now, normally, I would pull all of these into Lightroom, but I'm just going to keep the live going for this edit, and I'm going to show you how I narrow down to the ones I would edit in Lightroom next. So, typically, it's going to go between A shots and B shots what's the best and what's the second best. And that depends on how many images I got per scene. So for this first scene, I know I only got one image. Therefore, I'm gonna hit number five and watch that pink in the bottom right change to green. Now it's an A-list image, a best image. I'll do the same for this white flower. It's the only white flower shot I got. Therefore, it's automatically the A-list image. For the water drops, I had two cases. I remembered the second had the better brightness and better focus, so I'll mark frame two as the green one. This is the only frame for this. Green it goes. Same for this. And these are both uniquely different. Same for this. That's unique. Between A and B, I'm going to pick A, this one. All right, I'll skip that. We've got one cloud, so that's unique. And these are unique to their own. Same as this. Now between these two, remember I said I liked one better than two because of the lighting and how, how the image was talking to us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark one with the number five to mark it green in Photo Mechanic Plus. And then I'm going to continue on to this one and mark it green because it was the only one I had of this uh, Sable Palmetto Sable Palm Park, not a palmetto, Sable Palm. There we go, mark that green as well as that. If it's the only one of its kind for zoom or composition, it becomes green. So these are a toss up. I'll leave that one pink, it's too bright. I'll mark this one green. And green for this, green for this. Now this is a toss up, I think that Hmm. We're going to check for blown out highlights. Okay, no blowout. And I think the angle and direction and story, I really like this one for for the angle and direction feeling. This is nice. It shows the whole leaf, but I don't have one that shows the whole leaf yet, so that'll be green. This is one of a kind. Same for this and this. Getting close. All right, between these two, this has more front focus. This has more backlighting. They both have unique qualities. So you can see the pollen in that one. That's really interesting. Um, whereas with the other one, it's not backlit, it's frontlit. So in this one, we can see some of maybe some insects some thrips. And we can see the stamen and pistol. We can see all these little pieces of pollen. And then the pubescence over here, the hair on the surface of that petal. And if we go back an image, it's really interesting to see this, but everything else is pretty much lost. So I'm going to leave this as a, 
as a second grade image, a B image, and then this will be our A select with marked green. I'll zoom back out with the Z key, and yeah, I think I've already got a couple like that, so I'll leave this as a second one as well. Now we're going to check in on this. And these are lovely. I really like how those talk to each other. They're one of a kind each, so they both stay green. Um, I like the ant with it, both of its antenna out for the A-list. And that's the A-list as well as that over the other because it shows the species better with these markings. I could actually take my phone and um, you can use an app called Seek or Google the Google app. Um, I'll start with Seek because it's my preferred app. So if you, well, I gotta re-download it. That's gonna take forever. So check out the app Seek, S-E-E-K, and it's powered by Citizen Science with iNaturalist. That's who hosts the data behind it. It's basically like a Pokedex. It's really cool. I'll have to do a video on it for you guys soon. Sorry about the you guys thing. It's just, that's how I grew up. I know that there's many different types of people out there and, um, it's just part of who I am sometimes to say that, so. Um, let's see, I'm going to zoom back out. I know I want this one as an A-list, and this one. And then we're going to take this one over the other. Yeah, definitely. And then check these out. I think A, B, another great teachable set there. And that's a nice crop, but... I think we've got some better ones that fill the frame. All right, that one's nice, and I like that one. I like this one. This one's a little flat if we look at them comparatively, um, like this one versus this one. Or no, this one and this one. Um, I don't remember my compare view. I'm a little rusty on photo mechanic. I used to be better, but um, these two, I just I think the light in this one's more dynamic and um, less distracting, so that'll stay green, and the other won't. This is going to be the better one as the first one because of focus here, critical focus. Um, that's just something that my eye catches these days, and a lot of times it takes a really close look. Like, is that in focus? I think the edges. Let it load and might not be. That loaded them. Hmm, okay, we'll mark this one green. Same for this, same for that. And the final shot, I think this is the better one. So now we have 60, 62 images, and we've gone from 140 to 62, and then we did yes or no's for the best of the best. Which are the A grade first picks and which are the B grade second picks? If they're A grade, they're green. If they're B grade, they're pink. And now I can tick this little pink box and we are left with 48 A-list images. So I will take these 48 images and copy them into my Lightroom catalog. Now, if you want to see me edit these in Lightroom, um, that was the original plan. Unfortunately, I'm bad about overworking myself. So I'm going to leave this live stream right here where it's at. We're gonna park it here for today. And I'm going to say that it was so great to have you guys here, have everybody here. And thank you everyone for your support. I really look forward to the upcoming lives that I'm gonna be doing and um, stay tuned again for the next one. I'm gonna be editing these pictures in Lightroom and I will share that edit in the very near future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.